Guys, welcome back to Shadowrun Returns. I am, as ever, Runs With Fire, and we're here on the Harfeld Manor Run. Now, before I start, I really do want to make a quick apology. When I started this series, I had every intention of having two or three episodes out per week. And hopefully it was going to be a consistent series. Unfortunately, I have been beset with horrendous, absolutely horrendous technical issues. And it has caused me no end of grief. As much as I do these videos for fun, I do want to make them enjoyable to watch. And piss poor sound quality, poor video quality, these are all things that annoy me. It's not fun for you to watch, and it's not fun for me to edit and process when I know the quality isn't as good as it could be. So I feel somewhat like I've given you a tantalizing glimpse of thigh, uh, a cheeky nipple slip of what could be with my first episode. And then as I told you to sit back, relax, get comfortable, uh, I fucked off down the pub for a couple of hours and uh, <laughs> stumbled back drunk with kebab over my face and asked you why the fuck you were still here. It's not nice for me, it's not nice for you. Now I hope I have resolved a lot of these technical issues. I have been working very hard over the last week in amongst uh, my normal family life and everything else to try and resolve a lot of these technical issues and hopefully we're going to have something a bit nicer. Now on the subject of making these videos better, I would also really appreciate your comment and feedback. If you like the way I do certain things, let me know and then I can continue doing those things. If you don't like things in particular, uh, for example I'm going to be doing a bit of voice acting with stuff. If you don't like that, if you feel that's not really something that's that's gelling with the style of videos, let me know in the comments and I can change things up. I'm still learning, you're new to watching me, let's build this together. It's you, you and me buddy, you and me, on a special journey together, through the fucking mists of YouTube, and what we're going to do is create something beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. Absolutely B-E-A beautiful. And we're going to do it together. You and me. Right? But to do that, I need a little bit of your input. A little bit of your je ne sais quoi. Eh? And we're going to make these videos, or hopefully, I I'm going to make these videos as enjoyable for you to watch as it is for me to make them. And uh, that's that's something that's important to me. That's what makes this process fun for me, is knowing that I produce something that someone else enjoys watching. Anyway, uh, enough of my waffle. I've probably given you enough time to read the intro description, so I'm not going to read all that out for you. So let's get on with it. Yes, get on with it. They said Monty Python. So here we go, our first run. I'm feeling nervous. Mm. The Harfell Manor, 2054, just an hour east of Berlin. The estate grounds are silent, save for the faint whistling of the wind. Aww. Excuse me. Your team gathers near a side entrance to the old castle holdfast, cloaked in darkness. The night is peaceful. You know it won't last. You know it for what it is, a pleasant illusion that will shatter up the sound of the first gunshot. Bit fucking cynical. Monica, listen up folks. Monica Schaefer. You ran with her back in the day, watched her get her first data jack, and now she's your team leader and a de direct hot decker to boot. We're on a tight timetable, and when I enter the estate, find the basement, open the data vault, extract the files, and bolt. Ten minutes, top to bottom. She's all business, this woman. Diatrek. He's a shaman, the old man of the team. He smiled at her, his facial tattoos writhing in the moonlight. Trying to get in home? 
in time for worm talk, love. Oh, he's the old man. He's the he's the old salt of the crew. I feel. He's been around a bit. He knows the score. Monica's eyes twinkle with missing. Oh, you cheeky girl. Mm. <laughs> Maybe. I'm starting to like Monica. I I think me and her are going to get along fine. How many times have I told you? You can't trust anything that comes out of a dragon's mouth. That trig trash will rot your brain. As they say in the world of Shadowrun, never trust a dragon. But she grins and claims it's education. Besides, this should be a milk run. Security is supposed to be light, a few automatic weapons and no armor. With a little luck, they never know we were here. Now I've got a couple of responses here. Um, I, I, I feel I'm a little bit of a, a cynical kind of guy. Air on the side of caution, I think, on our first run. I think it's safer for all. In my experience, there's no such thing as a milk run. Words of wisdom from our new edition. I agree with Runzy Pants. That is how I will be pronouncing my name throughout this entire series. It must be pronounced with Runzy Pants. Appropriate flair. Uh, Glory, the Razor Cord Street Samurai. Her voice is cold and neutral. Her expression is placid. This, uh, little known fact, this is mostly due to a excessive amount of Botox. Uh, street Samurais are notorious, notoriously vain for their looks, uh, and many, in addition to cyber enhancement, will also have plastic surgery, a great deal of filler, Botox, makes them very stiff, can't see what they're thinking, very tricky characters. They may only be private security, but their bullets don't know that. I can patch you up if I have to, but I'd rather not have to, I'd rather you didn't have to either. You people need to relax. We're professionals, remember? Monica raises her arm and speaks into her wrist-mounted comlink. A darkened face shimmers on the view screen. Iga, are you in position? Hi, Igor. She... Right. I know it's e Iga. I have a little confession. I have played through a bit of the first mission. Uh, as I said, I was trying to, to film some stuff. I really do not like this character. So I refuse to call her Iga, and she will now and forever be Eagle. Uh, she is. She comes from a long, long line of Eagles. They all got hunchbacks. Um, terrible, terrible halitosis, halitosis. Uh, dreadful, dreadful. Uh, originally from Transylvania, uh, Igor enjoys grave robbing, uh, running from mobs with burning torches and pitchforks and long slow walks across the beach that's probably all you need to know about eagle the comment crackles and the responses come back low and soft softer than you'd expect from a troll affirmative master the alarm lines have been cut and i have a clear line of fire on the estate service entrance when you exit the building the path will be clear Oh, silky smooth tones from Eagle. Yeah, you you can even tell she's a troll with a, with a smooth dulcet tone like that. Couldn't even tell if you didn't look at her. Excellent, thank you, Eagle. Just doing my job, Master Eagle out. Yeah, get out of here, Eagle. Do your job. Give us cover. Monica. The comlink goes dark. Monica winks at you as she drops her arm. Hello. I'll see you in the bar after this mission's over, my girl. Hmm. See, we're professionals. All right, people, enough chatter. Our client wants the data from the vault, so we get him the data from the vault. Quick, quiet, and quick. Duck, dip, dive, dodge, duck. You said quick twice, and some inane reference to dodgeball. She grins. Worm Talk is on tonight, and Dodgeball is a fucking excellent film that I thoroughly encourage you all to watch. Glory raises an eyebrow. Slightly. That, that's Glory's uh, 
enthusiastic agreement that Dodgeball is a great film. Uh, again, the Botox really limits uh, the amount of expression. You got you got to watch for subtle signs in uh, in Glory. The, the the eyebrow speaks volumes. I feel. Monica, I told you, it's educational. Okay, so let's get this show on the road. Uh, we're going to grab my my kit here. We're going to grab a weapon now. I'm not very good with a gun. Uh, you, if you've seen the first episode, so I don't think grabbing uh, the pistol or the rifle is going to be any good. The throwing knives is fucking right out. I don't see the point in that, and I'm not a hand-to-hand -hand guy either. Um, I think we're going to be better off with either the shotgun or the SMG for some short-range stuff. So if a guy gets really close, I'm going to have magic. Uh, obviously because I'm a mage but I think if a guy gets really close uh, a decent shotgun shell to the face wouldn't be a bad backup so we're gonna take this sword off Benelli and we'll grab the rest of the kit uh, which apparently in includes my spells I've got mana bolt power bolt heal wound uh, I've also got a trauma kit and just over a grand in new yen that's good for me. Oh yeah. Sneak our way in. But it's not quite the clandestine mission I was expecting. Uh, we are apparently strolling up to a fairly obvious door. It may not be the front door. Uh, but it's a pretty obvious side door. Not the most subtle of the uh, approaches, I think. But we'll work with it. You know, we're a professional crew. We can deal with this. We're hard as nails. Uh, and apparently, we're into a private museum. The owner of the estate must have some money to burn. Well, if there's money to burn, including a complete fucking T-Rex, then let's see if we can loot any of this stuff. Doesn't look like it. A uh, piece of uh, modern art. I'm not sure if it's my taste. I know what I like, and it ain't that. <laughs> so, oh, looky there, looky here. Could this be a bit of loot? The vase in this case looks very old and very valuable. I'm taking it. I am taking it. That, that's all I need to hear. A fine scroll work of lapis and gold leaf decorates its exterior. Look, it's really expensive and my fixer could move this thing in a heartbeat. So, uh, vase, you are coming with me, my friend. As you draw your arm back to smash the glass, Diatrek catches it. His gnarled hand tight. Damn you, Diatrek! Old man Diatrek. He's he's a miserable old man. Uh, never lets the kids play out on his front lawn. Uh, kind of sits around with his writhing tattoos, looking mean. Uh, quite often he's a he's a shaman, so quite often when kids do play out on his front yard, he'll be there. Get off my yard! And if they don't get off, um, he sends a horrible elemental to squash them. Um, it's been quite a problem. There are a number of missing children in, in East Berlin. Uh, mostly the fault of Old Man Diatrek, unfortunately. God damn Diatrek. Well, we do have a job to do and he's right. Hauling a, a big vase around. Unless, of course, I have a, a vase orientated strategy that he was unaware of. And I believe I have an appropriate strategy right here. Oh, Diedrich stifles a chuckle. An excellent plan, runzy pants. I support it fully. But we should get moving, though. We mustn't keep the others waiting. Well, I suppose he's got a point. It doesn't look that big. I could probably... I've played Monkey Island. I can get a fucking dog down my pants. Ding dong. 
Uh, okay, the elevator should be to the north, so let's have a, a nosy about this area. That's locked. See if there's any loot down here. Uh, no! No, that's not loot. Uh, we don't need a tutorial. Okay, very quickly, for anyone who's not familiar with the combat system in Shadowrun Returns, this is the score. Uh, generally, you will have a number of action points for each of your characters. This, I believe, is determined by your quickness rating. And that will give you your action points, which are displayed in the bottom right of your character portrait. You'll see this little blue 2. And that tells me I have two action points. As you might imagine, an action that you do will cost action points. If I move anywhere within this first white square area, you'll see my cursor, it says a 1, and that will use one action point. If I move further out, and you'll see the cursor now changed with a 2 on it, and again over here, and that will use up both my action points. Then you have various other abilities. Uh, for me as a mage, I have my spells. And again, you will see the cost of action points in here, um, both on the screen in the little description in the dialogue box there. You'll see AP1. Uh, and there's also a little blue one in the bottom right-hand corner. Again, to let you know that it's going to cost one action point. Um, there's also a cooldown period for certain abilities and that tells you how many rounds you will be unable to use that ability for. So all fairly standard stuff. Uh, attacks, that's done here. You can see uh, one action point to shoot with my shotgun. It's one action point to, to use my power bolt spell. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, various other different characters have different abilities. Again, she's got a mark target ability, so uh, mark targets become easier to hit. Uh, Glory has an ability here where she increases the number of action points she has for three rounds, but it's got quite a long cooldown on it, six, six turn cooldown. Uh, and then Old Man Diatrek uh, he's got a number of spells here that he can use, and again, you can increase AP, uh, reduce incoming damage, aim, increases uh, a friendly's aim chance by about 12%. And again, if you're good with weapons, you've got a number of different abilities here. And again, that all depends on what weapons you're using and what character, obviously, you are. So, we're going to go with me. I think we're going to kick off with a nice big mana bolt. And it's a critical. I've done one and a half times damage. I'm going to follow that up with just a standard attack. Uh, that was weak. Eh, so, not fantastic. Okay, Glory. Glory has claws. I'm going to run Glory in and just finish this guy off here. pretty easy. Right, we're going to move our Decker in, Monica. And there we go, Decking 2. We can override the Matrix Operations door lock. Nice and easy. So that is now unlocked there, which is good news. Right, let's move... What can we do here? Let's increase uh, my accuracy and just move up to cover. Uh, and we've got some more enemies coming in, so things are starting to, to heat up a little bit. I'm going to have to move the team up, deal with this issue. Uh, get in here, see what, what's in this area, see if there's any fat loot. Now, we haven't got our spell. And I don't think, no, I 
far too far out on that. So we're just gonna go with that. Bit of standard damage. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's just move Monica up for now and then Glory. How far can we get Glory up? Glory's gonna run in uh, and do some serious damage with those claws. Look at those claws. Oh. Okay, let's. Uh, an aimed throw. 62%. Come on, die. Oh. I don't really want Diatrek to move out of cover, but. There we go. Oh, he missed. Well, let's put the hurt on her. So that's alright. This guy's coming in with the shotgun. He's missed, thankfully. Okay, I think I should probably use the, the big spell. Yeah, 8 damage on him. I think that was probably a good move. Ooh, and another 9. That's alright. Okay, now hopefully Glory should be able to run in and just finish this, this woman off. Yeah, look at that. I like Glory. She's hard as nails. Yeah, let's let's use one of Monica's abilities. Mark the target, and then aim shot. Ah, it wasn't a great hit, but. And then we got a pretty good chance with the knife throw. So we might... Oh! Well, that's okay. He's missed, so... That's easy enough. And then we should just be able to finish him off here. Nice and easy. Well, not much resistance on the old security front. Monica to to deck in, and we're going to go into the into the matrix here. Now, as I explained in the character creation uh, video, the first video, what deckers do, uh, how they interface with what is essentially a virtual reality internet, and when you're going in, you need your deck, which is basically kind of your your laptop. But it's more your your interface device and it's actually your deck that determines how many programs you can carry and programs are like spells essentially so you've got a heal uh, you've got damage dealing spells all that sort of thing uh, tells you how many programs you can have and you can see I've got a program here um, we'll see what that does when we get in your invasion and how much damage and how many action points you have so I, I believe it's actually a bit of a combination of your cyber deck and also your decking ability uh, and then we don't have any other bits in the stash so that's us let's jump into the matrix all right first thing we're gonna do assassin assassin ESP I like the sound of that um, when you want to kill things, generally something called Assassin is probably pretty good because we now have these IC, white IC. Uh, IC is intrusion countermeasures. They're, they're basically the bad guys of the Matrix. <coughs> Excuse me. And you've got two real sorts of IC. They're, they're, there's more... The, the Matrix was always the bit in Shadowrun that kind of confused me, but I know the basics, and White IC is a fairly basic uh, intrusion countermeasure. There is also Black IC, which is quite dangerous uh, and can be quite nasty. So we're going to use uh, Erosion. It does 75 points of damage. Uh, it's called IP damage when it's in the Matrix. And it also has a, a damage over time, so it does a, another 25 over 2 rounds, or a 50 over 2 rounds. So let's do that. And then we've got 
this. Assassinate. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move closer here. And then I'm gonna cast Assassinate. 150 IP, that's that's quite a bit of damage. Okay, so Monica should be able to pick that off fairly easy. And then have another two shots at that. There we go, nice and easy. And then we can move our Assassin Pro. Oh, oh, what do we got? Uh, another white IC. That's all right. Assassinates on cooldown for two turns. Lots of missing going on. Oh, alarm state. This here is the alarm state. Uh, and the more actions you do, the more countermeasures you fight, things like that, the higher this alarm state goes up. And if it hits here, the big red fuck off exclamation mark, you know that shit has really hit the fan. So you do want to be careful of that. Um, for now, we don't need to suppress. We're going to do Erosion, and another hit, and then hopefully this Assassin program will be able to take this out like that. <coughs> or the Erosion will take him out, that's easy enough. And that should let us in the data store, pay data, antiques, delivery schedule. A valuable shipment of antiquities will be arriving soon at the Seattle docks. Useful information to someone who can take advantage of it. We might be able to uh, sell that through our fixer. Whoever our fixer is, I'm sure we'll find out. I wonder how they do that in this one. Be interesting. Right, so there we go. Got some data. And hopefully, well, I did say security was light. Uh, I was apparently lying. Right. Mage or... I'm going to go for mage because mages can be quite nasty. Now, what you will have seen uh, with my character, Runzy Pants, was he's, he was standing on some circles here. And he's actually stood on one here. And you can see on the, the pop up there, Ley Line. Now, basically, this is a, an interactive thing for your character class. And different character classes all have different interactive icons. For mages, you will tend to see things like Ley Lines. And if you stand on a ley line, it will give you a boost to your magical abilities, basically. Diatrek. Ah, and you can see Diatrek has got one as well. Uh, this little skull icon means I can... There's what appears to be bones inside that case. Which means, as a shaman, I can summon a spirit which is trapped within those bones. But I have to get close enough, and I'm not yet close enough. I can get to within range, but I won't have any action points to actually uh, cast a spell. So we're going to move up there. Uh, we've got Monica. You can't see any. Oh, there's more security guards. That's not good. Uh, a granite. Oh, fuck. That does, <laughs> that does not seem good in any conceivable way. Uh, can we... Okay, Monica's going to move up. And... Glory. Let's... Adrenal Pump. Okay, so we've got an action, extra action point, but it has what used one of those action points to actually 
activate the adrenal pump. Uh, and we're going to run in and hopefully it's going to give us the opportunity to... Ooh. To... Ow! 18 damage. That's pretty nasty. Uh, I'm hoping it's going to allow us to deal with that mage. We apply the bleed. Yeah, there we go. I think that was a pretty good call. Uh, she's got a debuff on her. I don't see what that is, unfortunately. Uh, can I see what the debuffs are? Is there anywhere I can see the debuffs? No. Yes, no. Mm. Oh, there we go. Wounded. There we go. Wounded. And she's wounded. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so we are going to... Mark target on the Grenadier, I think. Uh, oh, no. Dire track. Dire track. You are going to heal... There we go, that's a good recovery. Now, heal spells don't heal for a random amount. They just heal for the amount of damage done on the most recent attack. So it's pretty important if you get a an attack done in, say for 18 damage on Monica there, that you heal up as soon as possible. Because the next damage done to her might only be 2 damage. And then you're pretty fucked if you try and heal, because the heal is only going to heal two damage. So, not good, Juju. Uh, let's... Get you. Alright, Dire you're going to call up that. And that is going to... Oh no, I haven't got enough action points on this. Anyway, we've called up this uh, flesh demon thing from the from the bones. That's pretty cool. Okay, you've cast that ability. You've got an aim shot. There we go. If we can just keep hammering on that troll. Oh yeah, that's right. Move closer. That glory heal. What ails you? <laughs> We're just going to tear you a new asshole. Basically, yeah. Completely ripped him apart. And started on the new one. Glory's awesome. And we're just going to heal some of that damage up. Uh, done to glory. Couple more spells in. Uh, Diatrake, what can you do? What can you do? Uh, we're going to give Monica a, an aim boost, I think. That's going to help her out. She can also mark, uh, mark this target here. And take a shot. Not great, but she hit. Okay, now you'll see with the spirit. Uh, the spirit has an escape chance, which is 9%. Which means it can break its bonds. And it will either dismiss itself. Or it will go on a horrible murderous rampage and kill everyone. I like to live dangerously, and I'm going to give him... Four, you'll see the more action points you assign to a summon spirit, the greater the chance that it's going to break free. Uh, but we're alright. We are alright. No, you don't want to cancel that. Uh, damage five. 
Can we, uh... Oh, not quite sure what's going on there. Uh, let's... Can we... Oh! Oh, right, you have to cast that on yourself. And Glory is... right next to him, so I don't think that's a very good idea. We managed to do a good bit of damage there, so that's alright. Oh. Okay, so Dire Trick, you can heal Glory again for that 10 damage. I think what we're going to do is Glory can just run in and uh, apparently just completely annihilate that guy. Uh, so that's nice. See if we can get. Oh wow! Okay. Uh, well, that worked out really rather well. I'm I'm quite happy with that. Uh, old man Diatrack spent a lot of the time cowering behind a pillar, uh, feeling very scared. Um, I think Glory was scared too, but the the amount of Botox in her face made it look very much like she was calm and control uh, whereas in reality she was literally shitting herself and charging wildly at the enemy driven by a, a cocktail of fear and uh, uh, a certain amount of adrenaline uh, particularly as we pumped most of that adrenaline into her system through some sort of illegal drug filtration system uh, which we've had wired into her body. Oh, that seems fair enough. I think if you're going to be a, a crazy street samurai, let's do things properly. Let's be crazy. Uh, and Glory kind of fits that bill. Wildly attacking with nails, scratching and biting, uh, and apparently that's a very effective method because she completely slaughtered uh, two or three people there. And good on her at the end of the day. Okay, so we're on to the next bit. 